We are very delighted to have here Sid Meyer, who's just come third in the non-pro cutting class. Sid, welcome to Equestrian Life. Congratulations. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. I'm, uh, I've had a great day. I'm very much looking forward to this interview. And uh, as I say, it, it's great to be in Melbourne, great to be at Equitana. And uh, we've had a good day so far. Now, Sid, a lot of people don't know the finer details about cutting. It's a very technical sport. So can you just give us a quick rundown of what a typical training session is for a cutting horse? Well, I'm not sure that there is such a thing as a quick rundown when it comes to any horse activities. It's certainly not the case for cutting. Uh, cutting is a sport that was born uh, in America on ranches with farmers who work their horses to manage their cattle. And most of the Western and most of the rodeo sports were born of the same sort of character. Cutting was one of those sports and it was brought from the, from the ranches or from the fields into, uh, into arenas over weekends where cowboys or ranchers competed against each other to see who had, had the best horse at cutting cattle out of a herd. That's the origin. Um, a typical training session is hard. For me, uh, I'm fortunate. Um, I've got some great horses, they're trained well. Um, I, I go and ride them from time to time whenever I can. I get lessons as, frequent, as frequently as I can. I've got well used to having instructors yell at me, <laughs> um, telling me to use my legs, telling me to sit up correctly, telling me all sorts of stuff which I've had for most of my life. It's hard to distinguish a, a typical training session. It depends on the age of the horse. For example, young horses are a completely different form of training session than an older, mature horses. I'm, I'm fortunate I've got uh, a couple of older horses, so the amount of training on them is more actually training for me than it is for the horses. And Sid, I've got to ask, assuming you've been in the equestrian industry for a very, very long time, especially with Yugalbar and the breeding, what is the best horse advice or, or piece of advice that you have grown up with and, and who, who actually gave that to you? Tough question. I agree with that. Uh, uh, listen, I'm not sure I've got a best piece of advice, but I do recall someone saying to me once, Sid, listen, there are too many good horses around to have to put up with the bad ones. So if I end up with a bad horse or a horse that I don't like or for one reason isn't suiting me or what I want to do with it, there's plenty of other good ones that will. And so... The best piece of advice I had was, you know, get a new horse if you've got one that's not working out for you or you're not comfortable with. I think that's very, very sound advice. And Sid, what is on, on the list of your equestrian bucket list? What else is there to tick off? Because third at Equitana is pretty snazzy. Well, I'd like it to be a, a red or a blue, of course. <laughs> and uh, maybe in future years, one of the things that the bucket list is to uh, walk off at Equitana with a, you know, with a wonderful prize. But um, more specifically in our sport, you know, winning futurities, derbies and classics is really, I suppose, the ultimate in, a, in our sport. They're all age events for horses that are rising four, rising five and rising six. And those, uh, those events are very important. They usually carry you know, material uh, prize money and both in America and in Australia to compete in and win any of the age events uh, at critical times during the year would be on the bucket list. There's a few other things too. I mean, I wouldn't mind going pack horse riding in <laughs> Colorado and having fun. We've got to remember there's a lot of fun in it too. Agreed. But um, those are a few things on my bucket list. Well, Sid, enjoy ticking off the bucket list. And we were very, very fortunate to have Sid Meyer, who has uh, come third in the cutting non-pro challenge for an hour. Ciao and tune in later.